I'd say there's four things that have really, if I reflected on it, have happened. One is um, acceptance of, of what happened. Um, like everyone, I had no idea what sort of trauma would be like. And um, you don't realise until you have to go through it that um, how you react and, and what it will do to you. But certainly for a while it was very hard to accept that Susan had been killed in such horrendous circumstances. So um, there's been a, obviously an acceptance over the years of learning to live with it. That's been, a, I guess, the best way to describe it. How do you learn to live? Um, so that's been one. The other is, other feeling has been um, actually generated by Susan, and that's um, carrying on with life. She'd be furious with me if I, um, you know, curled up in a ball and, you know, as much as for a long time you didn't even want to get out of bed, let alone interact with anyone. And I could hear her telling me um, not to do that. So it's been a um, an amazing um, closeness with her actually, even though she's not here. So um, that that's sort of been another aspect. There has been um, frustration, and that's been around the um, because of the earthquake and the fact that the building was defective and that's been quite clear but there's been no accountability and I guess one of the things that's been happening is that the Pike River um, tragedy has been running not quite alongside but pretty close to this tragedy and so um, there's resolution you know arriving at the Pike River tragedy um, whereas for the CTV building you know 115 people killed it's there's no accountability from anyone. So that's been a, a thing that um, I've had to come to terms with in a way. And when I say that, I'm not suggesting some vendetta or anything else. It's just if there is um, a culpability or a responsibility, then you'd expect, I'm, a, I'm from a professional background, you know, you'd expect the professionals or professional people to stand up and take responsibility. So that's been uh, something that I haven't let it dominate my thinking, but it's definitely always in the background. Um, and it's almost like one of those things, unresolved outcome. So it's happened. And I guess the last thing is, has been um, a real closeness with um, my family and Every day, and I'm not sort of embellishing this, but every day I think of Susan at some point. And I've got a new partner who, interestingly enough, um, was a good friend of Susan's. So that sort of helped, but there's not a day goes by I don't think of Susan in some way. You know, it's not just birthdays and Christmas, but it's, um, yeah, she's still with me, uh, which is a great feeling, actually. It started to evolve, and it's almost like when you have um, a big event in your life, as as it gets resolved, it's like the circus leaves town. Um, yeah, because there's so much going on, it's just incredible. And you've got all your friends, you've got family, you've got the authorities, you've got it was just overload. Um, but as that all slowly um, ebbs away naturally, and people start you know getting things resolved or getting on with their life, it's like the circus has definitely left town, and you're left on your own. Um, which I found personally the hardest part of it, of um, having to, you know, live suddenly and very suddenly on your own again without any preparation for it. So uh, that went on for for a bit of time. I, um, but I always knew that with that grief, I had to let it um, let it wash over me. You know, you can't. I decided yeah, I didn't want to run away from it or try to ignore it or you know, throw myself into work, although I did, but it wasn't a, an escape. Um, so that was the way I wanted to try and handle it. Um, and so slowly, each day, it does slowly get better. And um, you do find that as it 
slowly ebbs away, um, that you start finding real joy in other things. Um, and whether it's your children or you know, just having a walk in a garden or I, I love sailing, so you know, I've really, and that was something we used to do together. And so that's, I find, real joy and the ability to go and do that. So in other words, I found a lot of your um, view on life gets heightened because you suddenly realise how precious it is. Um, so that's been a, it's been a softening of, of clearly of all, all of those um, difficult emotions that we all had and part of it was fear. I mean I can still remember earthquakes at night and you know the house still shuddering and oh, yeah you just thought man is this the end of everything. Um, but that clearly it wasn't. Um, the other thing too was um, and my brother who's a, who's a doctor talked to me about it and that was being able to come to terms with things which I talked about before and and the way he described it to me, he said, look, you don't want to be one of those people, if you can not be one, uh, who people say, oh, he's sort of a nice guy, but there's something that's not right. You know, he's carrying this massive burden with him all the time, and it's sort of almost crippling. And um, I didn't want that to happen. So the reason I am happy to do an interview like this, and there's a documentary that I was in, um, was trying to do two things. One was um, let people know how special Susan and my relationship was and unfortunately how it ended. But secondly, that there is a way out, there is hope out of all of these things. And whether it's the human spirit or I don't know what it is, but um, it's, uh, it's a, a state of mind that you've got to try to get yourself into and whether you get control back because that's probably part of it because for a lot of it we're all out of control you know there's earthquakes there's insurance there's you know you're just sort of in this massive washing machine um, and it's slowly getting control back of your life and leading it the way you want to so it's been a really really gradual thing it wasn't just one epiphany and I thought no well I've worked it all out um, mm -hmm. takes time we have a little snippet of the video mm. that you recorded um, back then. I still had a lot of faith that Susan would be all right at that point. So I started texting her and, um, and I um, texted her every hour just saying, look, we're nearly there and keep going and things. Um, so I stayed there, Matt and I stayed there all night um, and it was raining and there's a lot of aftershocks and it was pretty cold um, and it was it was like hell, really. What does it feel like looking at it again? Um, first thing is I look shattered, <laughs> which I was when I did that from memory. Um, yeah, it definitely brings it home again. Um, a lot of the details, so as time's gone on, some of that finer detail you don't remember so much. Um, it was more the, the, bigger, the bigger bits, so yeah, I couldn't remember now where I'd parked, I guess. Yeah, I knew it was somewhere, but obviously Bailey Avenue. Um, so the, the mind, I guess, helps you live um, through that without having to go every day and um, relive every bit of detail. But um, yeah, that definitely, definitely brings the emotion back. You said there that some of the details slip away over time, which of, of course would mm. happen. What is your um, your strongest memory of, of that day? Is there one moment that you think of? The strongest memory would be um, that sense of hope fading. So right at the, I mean Susan was a really resilient, amazing person and when I first arrived, I thought, oh, well, if anyone can get out of that building, Susan will. You know, she'll know. She'll work away how to escape from it all. And But as that went on, um, that that confidence in her ability to do that, and because of the sort of person she was, slowly started ebbing away as the hours went by. So it was probably the strongest feeling was um, hope fading. 
Is there anything else that you want to add, Richard, that you think I haven't covered that you'd, you'd like to say? If there's one thing, it's that the, um, the human condition is, is, is really an interesting um, thing, and, and that is that we all have a choice, and the choice is how we want to be affected by something. So in other words, things happen to us, to everyone, at, at different times in their lives, but we all get a choice as to how we want to react to it and how we want it to um, become part of our psyche. And that, for some people, unfortunately, can be a negative thing. And they become very cynical and they become very you know, afraid of everything. Um, or, you know, some people are blasé about it. But the point is, we all get a, an opportunity to choose um, how we want to um, react and, and live with it live with any tragedy like this. And so I think the thing is that, in my observation, a lot of people in Canterbury have decided to use it in a really positive way. And I think that's a fa fantastic thing.